say it's been it's been a minute. Like it's been a long yeah. time since we've uh, had a conversation. Uh, I I recall our previous conversations. I don't recall all yeah, the details, but I I remember feeling positive. It was about um, them. <laughs> it was unfortunately uh, me trying to defend Shoe on Head, which now I thoroughly Oof. regret uh, well, since everything that's happened since. Then. Yeah, I went. Uh, well, it's okay. Times change, and you can't be faulted for acting on information you had at a different time. Uh, real quick yeah, though, uh, uh, can I have your pronouns? Oh yes, uh, he and they. Uh, either's fine. I'm not particularly attached to my gender. It's just uh, it's. You know, I'm 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 too lazy to fem present essentially, so I just I just go by he and they, and that's that works that works oh, fine for me. Totally fair, uh, completely fair. Um, oh, I gotta resize this. There we go. Okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> well, welcome, welcome to the stream, Psycho Socialism. It is uh, wonderful to have you on again, and uh, and we can talk about basically whatever you'd like. If you have a topic in mind, um, I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, you should probably. First, before anything else, uh, introduce yourself to the chat, tell them where they can find you and what you're all about, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, sure. Um, hey guys, some of you know me, I'm Psychosocialism, I make like video essay type stuff, I do science breakdowns sometimes, um, I've been doing a lot of media breakdowns recently where I like, you know, look at media and like, learn, like, figure out what sort of like, psychological science is can be learned from it. Basically, I use media as a jumping off point to talk about whatever I want. It's awesome. a lot of fun, you know. I, think that's, I love that type of stuff. That's some of my favorite content. So, yeah, I just did. I just finished it. I did. I did a lot of like, um, like berserk stuff because Ooh. berserk is really, really dense and it has like loads of like good, like psychological kind of not lessons exactly, but it has like a lot mm -hmm. of psychological themes. It has a lot of like you know uh, stuff you could like. It talks about abuse. It talks about uh ambition it talks about like lots of different uh topics uh that sort of orbit psychology so you can get into a lot of stuff like you know uh the main villain is like a perfect representation of like the dark triad as a concept which uh -huh. isn't really the best like concept like psychologically speaking it's a flawed but yeah it... it's scientifically flawed but yeah it has it has a lot of like internal problems with it but it like as a representation of what like um like human evil is griffith is kind of perfect and he like fits really neatly into those categories so i just wanted to explain it using that you know that sounds awesome um, i i am uh despite never having read the the berserk manga um although i'm hoping to correct that soon um i i have nonetheless been greatly influenced by many uh berserk inspired media um, like a lot of it. So, uh, I never have gotten around to, to getting to read the whole thing. Uh, I never had access to it when I was younger, but I do now. I, I would so. thoroughly recommend it because I, I, I made a, like a video, like a couple of videos about this as well, but it has like one of the best sort of representations of BPD in it mm -hmm. that's ever been put to like a fictional character like you know just sort of hmm. breaking down like a character's life and like looking at it and going ah so this is how bpd can form in a person like you know it has so many great things like that like trust me read berserk you will never will. you will you'll come out of it going this is one of the best things of the best stories i've ever come across it's just one of the like people like hype it up a lot but yeah. the hype is oh it's it's really I, I don't think I've I, I don't think I've ever heard a uh, a, a negative review uh, outside of perhaps uh, that it is uh, it, it is incredibly uh, brutal and traumatic in some uh, in some depictions. Uh, that's about the oh, yeah, only critique I've ever or, or like the only solid uh, like dislike I've ever heard. Everyone else has said you just need to read it, and and it is on my list. I just. Uh, I also have lots of things. Everybody is, of course, in chat and be like, "Oh, you've never seen it! Oh my god!" And I'm like, "Yes." I well, when know you when you get round to it, I'm looking forward to hearing your media take on it because I like ah, your media take. Yeah, more, so. I, I, I that's that's something that I I know is going to happen when I get there because I I again I've I've given takes on many media that already are inspired that are openly inspired by Berserk. So I mean, obviously, the entire FromSoft. Uh, 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 library are hugely influential games to me and uh, games which I've talked about a lot on stream both in terms of story and design and uh, yeah so yeah but... you can definitely see like the Berserk influence in the Souls games because like Berserk like, um, Berserk is about a guy with a big sword and yeah. the best 
and most fun way to play a Dark Souls game is to be a guy with just a giant sword going around messing people up. You know, allegedly, allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I, I think I, I, I think the best way to play a uh, FromSoft game is as a funky little broccoli with a tentacle weapon. That's my favorite. Way. <laughs> really? Yeah. If uh, I my my first like completion of Bloodborne was uh, a a pure arcane build which was one of the most ridiculous I should I am was not good I've gotten way better at from soft games since then but uh, I I was incredibly ambitious and was just like I want to do this this is the character commit this is like the path I'm committing to I'm doing a weird arcane build I'm gonna cast weird spells and I'm gonna have to wait until the very end of the game to get an to get the ideal item for my build but I don't care because when I get there it's gonna be awesome and it was uh <laughs> the the i don't know if you've played through bloodborne but um the like apex uh 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 arcane weapon is a parasite that you infect yourself with and it turns your hands into tentacle weapons um <laughs> and then you can also get a a there is a rune in the game that enhances arcane abilities by a pretty large margin that uh, turns your head into a broccoli. That's the best way to describe <laughs> it, or cauliflower, It's because it's white, but you, you, you get to play as a weird tentacle plant, uh, and it's awesome. It's fucking amazing. It's truly incredible. Um, See, Bloodborne, Bloodborne was one of the ones I, I didn't get because it was a PS4 exclusive for the longest I time, know. and I didn't have a PS4, and it was like, uh, I can't be bothered to go buy like a new console just to play one game, you know, like it's a lot of money. So uh, if you I, can I, find I never got around to playing. To borrow Bloodborne. it from, it is Bloodborne is amazing. It is legendary. It is just, it's my personal favorite of the entire Dark Souls of the entire FromSoft library. It's it's like. Uh, and even still, even after Sekiro, even after Elden Ring, which I put like close to 300 hours into Elden Ring at launch, it was ridiculous. It ate my entire life. Still, Bloodborne reigns supreme. Um, well, that's, that's a big recommendation. Like, I, I've got, I've actually got like a PS4 in my house right now. My ex oh, left it, it behind, it. and it. the problem is they haven't actually left the controller. No, so, <laughs> get a controller. Just get yourself a so controller and play Bloodborne right away. I'm telling you, it is worth it. You will not regret it. Especially since you're singing so highly the uh, the praises of uh, of Berserk, because as I understand it, Bloodborne uh, has an incredible amount of Berserk uh, in it, genetics in it. Uh, it and... Like the aesthetics of it certainly are. Like the yeah. like the everything is quite kind of crazy, hyper violent aesthetic. Like Dark Souls is more like sort of grungy and like you know it's it's dark but it's like you know it's kind of muted in its tones blood tone uh, bloodborne looks at least like it's just got more like insane like lovecraftian almost is, like imagery in it the, it is it it i've i made a video i don't even know actually i don't know if i actually ever published it as a video standalone but i did a stream segment a long time ago where i talked about how bloodborne is better lovecraft than lovecraft um, in that, like, like it is, it is a, it is an inspired media that surpasses the original and should be seen as like the the better foundation, uh, in my opinion. It does, it does everything that Lovecraft. It takes all of the good from Lovecraft and boils out all of the bad, um, like in so many ways. It is there is so much shit that I could talk about in Bloodborne. Uh, that would make me sound like an absolute maniac, which is perfectly fitting um, because the game is uh, it is a it is a game about all kinds of it's got all kinds of themes going on in it that people ignore. Uh, uh, I, I shouldn't say people ignore it. There's actually a ton of really cool channels. Um, there's actually a video that I've been that I have on my wait on my list right now that I've been waiting to watch, which is called the visceral femininity of Bloodborne. Uh, which I'm really excited to watch that. Um, Bloodborne is one of those games where, like, the lore has has still is still in like in in capturing people now. Like most of the games, most of the Dark Souls games, you know, there's a pretty heavy fall off after people figure out most of what's going on in the games. But Bloodborne has so much shit going on in it, and so many weird mysteries and things that are intentionally left tantalizingly deranged that like 
I don't know. You just got to play it. It really is incredible, and I think you'll find yourself in love with a new game. Um, oh, I, I probably, I probably will. I, a new game addiction is uh, probably not what I need right now. But no, it's a good one. I, I tend to be say. one of those people who like uh, go who like gets full on like addicted to things, and like I hyperfixate, and it gets like out of control. That's what but happens to me too. I, yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a, it's it's a common struggle. We all we all we all fight through it. Yeah. Um, I like that uh, title of uh, you just said though, visceral femininity. Uh, yeah. That's a really nice like co that's just a nice sounding combination of words. I love that stuff. That's it is great. And uh, I'll tell you, you're in for a treat if you uh, if you like if you find like lore videos and stuff like that, like a, like a soothing or or in, enrapturing experience because there's a lot of them about Bloodborne. To the degree somebody even wrote a book about it. It's called the really? pale the pale pale blood hunt. Uh, a they wrote a book and published that book uh, as as a a deep analysis of Bloodborne lore and the themes going on in Bloodborne. I think it's called the Pl Pale Blood Hunt. Um, Getting like a published book going like about a piece of media like that that's kind of intense. Like it, that's like a, a symbol of like the dedication that goes. It into really is creating art. You know, it's incredible. Yeah, you can actually get a free version of it still. Um, but yeah, it was it was like formally published. It's it's got it's got an entry on Goodreads with 500 reviews. It's uh, incredible. Wow. Yeah, that's how that's how hard people went on this particular game. It, it's a it's an incredibly meaty game lore wise. Um, plus, All right. it's just a, I, absolute I, I'm sold. Yes, yes. <laughs> That makes me happy. Consider consider me a convert. I I, I uh, shall I shall investigate ways to play this now because I, I want. I have to. infested you with the madness. You've been touched. You didn't know, but this whole time there's been a. Uh, you can't see it because you have yet to be enlightened. But there is a a worm tunneling through my audio feed into your ear and infecting your brain at the moment. <laughs> Well, it's like, you know, in six months there'll be a video essay like you know the insane psychology of of, <laughs> of Bloodborne or something like that. I opened the Necronomicon and now, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and now my brain is juiced. Makes makes you go a little crazy, but uh, I thought it was a I thought it was a a wonderful ride down Madness Lane. So oh, I'm looking uh, forward to it. Yeah. Um, the reason um, I, I anyway, go ahead. I should probably like. I know we don't have too much time here. There's probably other callers who are like, you know, bigger, bigger, bigger figures than me. It feels kind of strange, like you know, talking to you after people like Joe Lewis and President Sunday because You're like fine. Don't worry about it. The whole point of this <laughs> night is to bring all kinds of different people together and make connections. That's the goal of tonight. Well, I'm, I'm glad that this stream, um, this this stream always stands up for the little guy, and uh, I'm the little guy right now. So that that's it's it's good to good to know I'm in in a good space, you know. But the uh, reason I wanted to uh, chat in the first place because I saw when you were chatting with Luxander about mm -hmm. um, burnout and creative yes. burnout. Yeah. And I was wondering, like, what, like, do you have any, like, I'm just curious, like, what, what do you do personally to sort of, you know, get past that? Because there's lots of different. I made a video about burnout a long time ago, and like, it's a very difficult thing. It's a difficult nut to crack uh, when you start getting into the cycle of burning out. Uh, creating content and it's a very complicated thing so i was just wondering like what, what you would what you do personally to uh you know sort of overcome that feeling um yeah uh so uh i am no expert i should say um lately i have been adapting pretty significantly how i deal with burnout uh in the past the way that i dealt with burnout was not very healthy uh, I will say uh, that the way that I did it before was I would make content in huge bursts whenever the inspiration struck me, uh, almost in a almost like a simulation of like a manic depressive phase where I would uh, I would uh, I would go insane on making content. I would stream huge streams just back to back to back, and then I would uh, when when I finally crashed, I would just disappear from stream. I would sometimes some of my OGMs will tell you there was literally times where I I just stopped streaming for a month at a time. Um and uh and that was that was not a healthy way of doing it, but and uh now I've actually uh for the last like year or plus maybe I've managed to maintain a regu a, a fairly regular content schedule up to the point that now I've got like enough content that I'm making where I can upload a video every day without breaking, you know, without breaking that schedule, which is awesome. Um, and the way that I've been doing that is just by, um, at least for me, I don't force myself to any schedule. 
um, outside of an aspiration to try and make sure that I have a video to upload every single day, but I don't like make myself stream when I don't want to, um, basically. And uh, that's uh, probably a bit of a luxury for the fact that this is like, it's my career, but it's not like my life and death. Um, I ha we have, you know, a little bit of, uh, of, of space to breathe with regard to finances. So um, I'm not like on a paycheck to paycheck life anymore. Um, but also I, that's also part of the reason why I don't advise most people pursue content creation as a career um, because oh, I don't think it's viable for most people, unfortunately. I think think it's like sort of a miracle that that it even happened at all for me, um, and even still, even with all the luck that I've had, it's not enough to like cover my household's expenses. That's just not how it's just not realistic, um, especially you know when you consider all the expenses that come from like editing and all that. But anyway, the point is, uh, the way that I avoid burnout now is that uh, I just, I just, I I I, I let myself n not stream if I'm really not feeling it. And uh, even if it's not the most advisable thing, uh, even if it's like, uh, even if it's like not perfect, I find that allowing myself to be that way means that I will stream out of a desire to talk about something, um, out of yeah. like a genuine motivation to say something to an audience, as opposed to out of a feeling that like uh, my audience is going to be mad at me if I don't do something or YouTube is gonna be mad at me if I don't do something. I still grapple yeah. with that a lot. Like it is a regular thing that I grapple with. Um, and- Yeah, because but... you were saying before about like the passive aggressive sort of way that YouTube kind of prods you into creating more and doing more content and doing content that people like. It's yeah. like, oh, this video didn't do so well. Okay. Oh well. I guess. I guess you'll just have to try again. And it's like, oh, oh, oh okay. And I mean, you I know? could go. I could go in on that. Like, also, there's this. Uh, there's a bunch of little insidious things that people don't notice. Like, I genuinely think that the way that like algorithm-based uh, jobs have evolved is like one of the most unhealthy things. And I, I, I have worked a lot of jobs in my life. It's almost a meme in my in my community that like I've done so many different. Like, what job haven't I worked? Um, I've, mm. there's many jobs I haven't worked, but I've actually worked a ton of different jobs in the course of my life. And, um, YouTube has simultaneously been one of the most fulfilling and also one of the most difficult, like mentally. Um, and part of it is because like an example of this, whenever you have a video that does really good, that becomes the new baseline for your channel, uh, by YouTube's mm. mind. It will compare every video that you publish afterwards to the video that did really well. Um, and even though they will never, it will never like tell you like you're you're a fuck up, you know. Either you don't. It, it's not a boss that's yelling at you saying you're a fucking piece of shit. Get to work, blah blah blah. Instead, it's just like reminding you through a hundred different ways. Oh, you had this video do really good, and this this video isn't doing that good. What's up? What's wrong? Yeah. And there's this. Yeah, it's fear. like almost like. Yeah. It's like having like a boss that only sort of communicates like it's like a dystopian future, right? And like imagine you're sitting in an office and the only way the boss communicates with you like your performance or what you're doing is over like a tannoy with like an AI speaking at you. Yeah. And it's like a it's like a rote sort of similar message like your performance is down 3.5 percent. Unironically. And like that's all the feedback you get. <laughs> and and you get lost in the numbers really easily. Uh, mm -hmm. The numbers thing is like, it's it's so hard to disentangle. You're constantly bombarded with them as a part of like doing your job, like going and answering comments. Like it's a part of yep. your job to engage with this shit, but these numbers are like confusing. You don't know, the, nobody gets to know how the algorithm works. It's all guesswork. Um, literally, it literally. is. Even the best channels, it's all guesswork. Nobody actually gets to know how it works. Doesn't know. Nobody gets to know 100% what it's working with. Sometimes YouTube will make videos uh, from their like official account that will give you some hints as to what they're looking for, but you never actually get to know. It's maddening. And so for me, I have just had to decide like what is valuable to me. Um, and, and to me, it's like, 
you know, obviously growth is valuable. Meeting, my, I want to meet, I've set a sort of personal goal of like, I want to upload a video every day if I can, but uploading a video every day as a streamer means a little bit different than like a video essay. So um, I wanna get a video from my streams, you know, so I wanna make sure I'm streaming relatively regularly, but not on any lockdown schedule. I don't want to feel like on a Tuesday rolls around, I gotta stream because it's Tuesday, no. I want to stream because I have something to say. I want to stream yeah. because there's something funny I want to share with you all. Um, I want to stream because uh, there's this thing, this issue that's stuck in my craw and I got to get it out to my audience, something like that, you know? Um, and I, I focus on that and that has helped a lot. That, that yeah. philosophy has been the biggest uh, deterrent to burnout. And I can't say that it's going to work forever, but it's worked for a long time. It worked way better than my old style of just burning out and then waiting out the burnout for as long as it took. Um, instead, I just don't have the burnout in the same way. Um, and uh, seems I don't know. Like, it seems like it's been an effective strategy for you. I mean, you've been growing pretty consistently since then. Like, like, like you said, like it's about like readjusting your goals. You know, yeah. like not just saying, "Oh, I'm going to make a video every week or every month or every," you know. I'm, I'm talking from a video essay's perspective, of course, like streaming is a bit different, but it is, it is. And, uh, and there's a, it's a, it's a bit of a different game. And, and also like, I don't know, I've had to adjust my, my understanding of YouTube so many times since I started this stuff. And I don't know, uh, it is hard because, uh, I mean, I still, like I said, I still struggle with this shit all the time. It's just, it's not reached the level where I hit the burnout phase. Like I, I, on one hand, I sit here and I'm like, damn, I've been growing, my channel's been growing like crazy. And yet I'm still constantly feel like I'm not doing enough or like I'm doing something wrong that's gonna lead to my channel. Just one day I'm gonna wake up and the next day my channel is gonna be like out of the algorithm and nobody's seeing my videos anymore and then I won't have a career. And I don't yeah. think that's, a, and the worst part is that I don't know that that's 100% an unreasonable fear. I just have well, to- Well, it, it happens. Like, it has, uh, I yeah. Yeah, like I had a really, uh, like a a really successful video. Um, uh -huh. It was a Berserk one, and like Berserk videos tend to do well because like the community is really, really into it. So like uh -huh. everyone will watch a new Berserk video when it comes out. And all of a sudden, like <clears throat> I saw this video go from like going, you know, doing pretty standard numbers to jumping massively for like three weeks uh -huh. to the point where it was like, oh, like I've got like twenty k views on this now, awesome. And then YouTube age gated it. Oh my because God, it was about right? sexual abuse because that's what I, the topic I was discussing and I was like damn it <laughs> like I was so 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 angry and that is you know, something that like... has happened so many times in the history of YouTube which is why it's like it's hard for me to t to like it's really hard for me to find ways to calm myself down when I'm freaking out about it because I'm like oh there's been adpocalypses there's been yep. content change I mean something that changed recently for our channel is like all of my videos now are getting limited because of the changes they made to the rules around swearing and then they undid them yeah. slightly and we were following the rules but uh because of the changes it meant it means that all of our videos get limited by default and then have to be appealed appeals are a seven day process which means um you know a seven day maximum process sometimes it's faster than that but you don't really know so we have to choose between dropping things while they're relevant um versus uh, you know, waiting for them to be monetized, which is ideal in the algorithm because limited videos don't do as well. And it's, it's insane. And like, yeah, it's, so it's, this it's, type of stuff is like, like you say, it's maddening. Yeah. It's like staring into an abyss. That's like, you know, criticizing you in a very vague way. And it's, it's so, it's so frustrating to deal with, but I think your approach of what you were saying of like, I, I, I'll stream when I have something to say, yeah. I find, when I've got something that's stuck in my craw and I need to get it out. Like, I think, I've been kind of approaching my videos like that way lately and that's been working a whole lot better like mentally for me. Yeah. So I, and and I, I think... think like I'm I I am someone who uh a lot of people there are plenty of people who would who are and have been judgmental towards my approach who would say that my approach is lazy or whatever. Um, people who would say all especially I mean, yourself, right? Your your internal monologue kind of does that for you. It's like, constantly. hey, you're being lazy. You're being lazy. <laughs> yeah, it does. But but at the same time, I also look at the highest level of performance in in these spaces, the most successful people, and the burnout rate 
is astronomical. Um, and yeah. I'm talking people who are making millions of dollars off their channel and they're still burning out because apparent, you know, because money can't buy you not burning out creatively. I mean, uh, literally just like a couple of days ago, uh, one of the most popular YouTubers right now, uh, 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 Moist Critical, Charlie, um, you know, Penguin uh, Z1, uh, like yeah. he's, he was, he did a video talking about YouTubers burning out and how many of them it's been happening, how many of his friends have just stopped creating content entirely and how it's like, oh, well, you know, they've reached a level of success and they can do that. But um, if it happens to the people who are making millions from this shit, to the people who have hordes of adulating fans, you know, then it can yeah. happen to any of us. So my approach is that at the, at the end of the day, uh, I grapple with my internal monologue and I ignore outside people who tell me that I'm not doing things right because I'm not going to end up, uh, I want to be here for the long game and I want to be here to make content that will be memorable in people's minds for a long time. Uh, and I think personally the key to that is, uh, is, is fighting with people who are, who, who, always want to optimize or fighting with the part of myself that oft that wants to optimize everything. Um, yeah. Because fighting it can't with be done. Perfectionism. Yeah. Because it can't be done. Yeah. It, it, it can't be done. You cannot please yeah. the algorithm there. You can only, uh, you can only work out a bargain with it, you know, that will be one, temporary at best. Yeah. One of, one of the things I, I used to see a lot when I was working in mental health, I don't anymore. Like I, I burned out on that a long time ago. It's, uh, I, that's why I made a video about burnout because yeah. like being, you know, working in the health service through COVID and working in mental health with oh like God. kids in particular, yeah. that was, it was a rough time. And like m mentally, I really can't sort of handle it anymore, which is a shame because it's what I enjoy. But, um, sorry, one second. My phone just vibrated for no reason. All right. no um, that's distracting. Where was I? Um, uh, you were saying yeah. that you burnt out on mental health care. Yeah, so, uh, but one of the things I saw when I was working in mental health, particularly working with people with um, eating disorders, was this um, this uh, this perfectionist idea of, like, uh, people with eating disorders, they, like, have this false, like, kind of image of what perfect is in their mind, which is always changing and always shifting further down the road. Like, you know, right. even if they achieve their goal of being X weight, for example, yeah. they always see, ah, well, I can still lose more, you know. Yep. And it's you could see like the destructiveness of perfectionism, and it happens in like every industry to a certain extent. You know, I, it's not just eating disorder people who feel like that. It's like it's a it's it's like a common sort of normal part of thinking gone wild. Like that's yeah. what an eating disorder is. It's a common uh, part. I, I think of, it's like, especially gone off. Uh, uh, that's especially a good observation when you think about like the type of people who are drawn to this type of work anywhere are already people who are ambitious. And it's very yeah. easy to blur the lines between ambition uh, and and uh, you know standards for what you're creating and that perfectionism, and it's constantly being encouraged by the system at hand that wants more content, better content that gets more views. It's so hard to do, and it's like I've noticed that a large amount of my mental energy goes to to keeping these things at bay and I'm hoping to figure out more and more tactics over time that help me to just be able to create more healthily. Um, there have been many times where I've sat down and I've thought, I don't think that this industry is actually viable. Uh, I think that um, there are a handful of people who make it and the rest just burn out uh, and and are forgotten. Um, but yeah. I don't know that, well, I, don't, the, the... I don't believe, I don't know if I believe my doomer self because uh, I do think that there are ways that you can, um, I, I like to believe, and I'm at least going to try to find a way to make content and make videos that are that are valuable and high quality that doesn't leave me miserable. That's my goal. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good goal to have. The th what you touched on just there is, uh, like, there's, there's three sort of components to burnout. Like, this is, like, in the literature, right? There's three yeah. components to it. One of them is emotional exhaustion. That's like a big thing that you get, especially when you're like, when you were debating, for example, like that's yeah. a lot of emotional effort that you have to go through dealing with people like Rob Nor. like that's an emotionally yeah. taxing event. It was you know, incredibly, that's... yeah. 
yeah, like how do you not just like flip out on the guy because he's just ranting on? But that like emotional exhaustion. So you know that's like a big part of burnout. The second part is the one that you were just speak speaking about, and that's cynicism. You get cynical about the industry that you're working in. When the cynicism creeps up on you, it makes you feel like your entire job is pointless. Like you're not actually doing anything that's constructive or creative. Um, the big uh, poster child for this is um, ambulance drivers. Ambulance drivers have like I think a nine out of ten was the uh, this is pre-COVID research, but nine out of ten ambulance drivers feel depersonalized by their job. They yeah. get they're so cynical about the system they're in, and they don't feel like they're making a difference. So ambulance drivers burn out at a massive rate. And I've had drinks with ambulance drivers. They will yeah. tell you some messed up things, like yeah. oh yeah, I attended this call the other day, and like someone's you know. I'm I'm not going to mention the details because they're pretty graphic, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that that cynicism when it creeps up on you, it's it's really insidious. And what it does is it makes you less effective at what you're doing, and that creates this vicious sort of cycle where you get, like, not only do you feel, oh, the job is messed up and the the system is breaking, but I'm breaking within the system and I can't fix it. And I and it goes round and round in this horrible I, I vicious cycle. I should talk cycle. about that real quick. Um, not to interrupt you, but. Um, no, no, it's cool. There Let's is something that I've done specifically because that's one that I deal with a lot is um, is uh, especially uh, this especially was true during certain avenues or during certain uh, um, what was the word I was trying to reach for not avenues a uh, certain uh, portions of my career on this website where where I felt like um, people who were against me were making videos that could get hundreds of thousands of views saying something horrible about me and then my response to it would get a hundred views a couple hundred views um when i was way smaller and i had these huge channels taking me on and even hell yeah. even the the recent uh drama with the the whole shoe on head thing where it's just the numbers were so off that it, it made me feel very cynical in some ways and one of the ways that i have personally uh uh got gotten better about that is that i i have created a a I, I save certain comments. When I get a comment mm. that I feel like came from the heart from somebody and they say, hey, here's a really tangible way that your work has helped me, um, or here's something that I took away from a video that you made, or here's something, I will I will save that comment with a date and everything. And I have a little a little box basically of 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 comments that are ones that show that my no matter how no matter what like even if there's some fucking asshole who's way bigger than me dunking on me or whatever or or making up bullshit completely i mean like i said i mean the last situation some shit was said about me that was completely out of hand and uh and totally untrue but was seen by a lot of people and there was nothing much i could do against it um and but knowing that nonetheless that despite that there are still people who've been directly impacted by something that i did does help me defeat that cynicism uh that feeling of cynicism yeah it's a it's a really valuable weapon to have like you know people in like the audience like people in chat right now they might you know they might just sort of post hey i love your stuff hey like you know they'll post it like not thinking too much like they'll just yeah. be like being nice you know they'll just be like posting stuff and like saying oh hey like you know you really helped my life out like you've done this for me you've done that for me thank you uh -huh. and at, on the surface it doesn't seem like it like it m might not seem like it impacts us as creators but god damn it's a huge boon like it keeps you upright sometimes it really it does. keeps you yeah. going you know like i've got a whole i did i'm similar to you actually i've got like a whole a uh, bunch of like comments that i think about whenever i get like you know feeling like oh, i don't want to create this any i don't want to make content anymore it's like what's the point i'm never gonna i'm never gonna live off this you know so what's the yeah. point of making it and then I think about like the guy who sent me a few quid on Patreon and like said, "Oh hey, like thank you. You inspired me to go get therapy." Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. <laughs> just a, just a couple of sentences and it's just like, "Damn, like I I feel it again. I feel the urge, you know? Yeah. I feel the drive again." And I I think that like the these are not by by the way what 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 both of us are talking about here for those in the audience who aren't creators of any type, these are not tools that are provided to you. You have to make these yourself. There is no yeah. way there. Uh, YouTube doesn't do uh, uh, your best comments feature. 
there is no <laughs> way for you to save within YouTube comments that you really, really like um, or anything like that. Uh, you have to do it yourself. Otherwise, it just gets washed away in a never ending stream of comments that come at you, some of which can be very, very cruel and very, very hateful. So there, and there, in fact, there's not even any suggestion that you do this. Like YouTube doesn't even say, hey, like, um, like, oh, hey, uh, I mean, I, I nominate your best five comments. You know that would be yeah, a cool feature. Like, that'd be cool. Here's the here's the 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 the, the top five vote, most upvoted comments on your videos or whatever. Like yeah. there's nothing like that. You have to do it all yourself, and that feels very self indulgent and almost silly. Like you're giving yourself a little pin one day. Um, but it's also just keep in mind that most workplaces will have. Uh, not to make a, a positive or a negative comparison from YouTube to an average workplace, but in an ideal workplace, you'd have a manager who'd, uh, you know, once in a while slap you on the back and throw you a pizza party if you did a really good job. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you have nothing like, like that on YouTube except for your numbers have increased. Congratulations. Move on. Continue creating content. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. It's like, oh, this one is doing slightly better than average. Congratulations. I'm like, oh, thank, thanks, robot. Like, that's exactly what I did. Exactly. Wow. Um, my your Your metrics are up by 3.5% percent this month congratulations like, <laughs> it's ridiculous anyway uh your impression is click through right there. uh no, I no didn't I, I, I was take you off the whole thing but no it's, it's cool I was, I was gonna go i was gonna go off on like a tangent about the, um, the nhs briefly because when i was working um in the nhs like i was i was pretty in deep like it was yeah. psychiatric intensive care that's like you know that's... guys who come in off the street and they're like completely detached from reality and you've got to bring yeah. them back and it's a whole it's a whole process but the thing that kept everybody going, even in like really difficult times, really difficult patients and like, you know, long term stays and people who people who were stuck in the system. There was a lot of we had a huge wave of people who were sent from immigration centers. That was a whole mess. Like yeah. it was, you know, but what kept people going was the fact that everybody there was willing to they would catch when you were feeling down and they would say, hey, how you doing? you know yeah they would they would have a conversation with you and pick you up like we had a really close-knit team for a while that was really good at that so having like people around you who can like like you said like a manager who slaps you on the back or throws you a pizza party or you know the nurse in charge like say hey you handled that situation really well like we're well done for that like you know go take a five minute break you've earned it like those little things like they don't seem like much at the end you know the people at the top of the chain in any workplace situation will see it as wasted time they'll see it as you know something that's detracting from profit or you know a waste of you know money or some or something like that they they yeah. you know people at the top tend to think like that but those little moments at like work or in content creation where someone just sends you a really nice comment those things keep people going it's like they a do. Yeah. It's like a sort of psychological food that people need you know it's like it is the it is the it is the fuel that that makes any of it worth it and none of it yeah, would function if, if people didn't have that. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. That's why I, I have, you know, I've taken a lot of efforts to try and highlight, spend more time engaging with uh, positive comments and also uh, spend more time highlighting them and, and making, making a part of my work, uh, enjoying the rewards, the, the, the rewards that exist of that work. Otherwise the burnout yeah. comes in. Um, well, yeah, always take your time to bask in the glow, you know? Yeah, yeah, seriously. It's like essential. Like it's it's not just like a like a trite thing. It's like if you will not be able to continue making content. Um and again, it does sometimes feel like you're giving yourself a medal, but at the same time, no one else is going to do it. So, yep. Uh, I was gonna say that's that. just how it works. There's there's the first medal that you're going to get from anybody is if you make it to 100,000 subscribers and a lot of youtubers will never make it to that length even though they're making some of the coolest shit in the world um yeah that's true so. like how how often do you stumble across like really small youtube channels who are making really good shit like just often, like often. blows your mind like, yeah yeah well like um we, this is we, one uh, uh, i hate to to cut us short or anything like that oh yeah no, um, we've been we, we've, we've been rambling been going about for a while that. but but please um Shout out your channel and your stuff one more time. This was an absolutely amazing conversation. Um, we just have a couple no, other people waiting, and I want to make sure that everybody gets their time before I run out of energy. So, <laughs> of course, of course, uh, it's been it's been wonderful chatting to you. You're Likewise. you're an amazing person to talk to, and um, 
this this stream has been really really good like i it's it's just been like an excellent like a, a list like a list of bangers it's just been a list of banger conversations that's how i feel so. i'm like i can't wait because we're gonna t we're gonna i'll be able to post all of these conversations and each one of them has been awesome for a different reason so i'm super super excited so okay i will i will uh make way for the next person but um, thank you i'm i'm psychosocialism check me out on youtube uh also i don't i'm also on twitter at socialism psycho if you still use that hell site why would you it's bad for you um i make videos about psychology and media and philosophy occasionally and i dip my toes into a whole bunch of stuff and um yeah check out check out my videos on things i i do i do good stuff i think you know <laughs> that's well that's the uh, best the best uh, uh self praise i can come up with right now <laughs> I, I, I have not seen, I don't think I've seen, I may have seen one of your videos, but uh, I will say that I've enjoyed our conversations and this conversation has been wonderful. So people, please go check out Psychosocialism and thank you so much for coming on, seriously. Hey, no problem. If you want to, if you want a place to start with my stuff, um, check out the destruction I did of uh, Lisa Littman uh, and okay. her really bad uh, ROGD papers. That Those ones are fun because I will basically do. spend, you know, half an hour just dunking on really bad science and it's fun you know it's fun dunking on idiots so <laughs> well thank you so much i hope you have a wonderful rest of your night uh well it's it's morning here it's very rest of your morning <laughs> out yeah but <laughs> have have a wonderful rest of the stream um i will be i will be around so you know have good conversations i'm sure you will have a have a, have a good time Bye love to now. all of you guys in the chat